Abbiamo adesso un intervento eh, registrato del professor Ardel, eh, il cui studio è stato alla base delle, eh, della classificazione delle radiofrequenze eh, come possibili cancerogeni per l'uomo da parte dello IARC, di cui commentavamo prima, e eh, se eh, riusciamo tecnicamente ad accoppiare il sonoro con le immagini eh, dovremmo riuscire ad avere una eh, presentazione eh, ben fatta eh, sull'argomento sempre dell'epidemiologia, eh, del, dell'uso del telefono cellulare e del fattore di rischio che eh, comporta. You start recording? Yes. Okay, thank you for inviting me to this conference and give a short talk over Skype regarding the brain tumor risk from cell phone and cordless phone use. Second slide. Uh, we can look at uh, the brain, uh, which is the target organ for the handheld phone. And the brain is located above a line from the eye to the ear. And that area, which is called the temporal area, regio temporalis, close to the ear, is that part of the brain which gets the highest exposure to microwaves from mobile phones and cordless phones. Next, please. There have been made um, uh, measurements of or calculations of the distribution of SAR in different parts of the brain. Here is a report regarding the 900 megahertz and the 1800 megahertz. And as you can see, if the phone is held against the right side of the brain, most of the exposure comes on that side, 97 to 99%, as you can see in the total. And most goes to the temporal lobe. Temporal lobe, about 50% of the microwaves are absorbed in that area, but also to some extent in the frontal area, which is uh, the fore part of the brain, and also in cerebellum, uh, which gets some additional exposure. Uh, number four shows. Uh, uh, the distribution made by Om Gandhi, which I think most of you are familiar with. First, up to the left, we have a grown uh, adult man, uh, where we can see the absorption to the brain close to the ear where the handheld phone is, is located. And it's rather localized uh, exposure. Uh, the exposure is absorbed by the skin and also by the bone, so it doesn't penetrate as long as the next picture we see a 10-year-old child where a much larger part of the brain is expo exposed. And especially if we, if we go down left, we see a 5-year-old child where most of the brain is exposed. And uh, uh, this is of course since uh, the bone is thinner, uh, but what is, what is also worrying is that there's a higher conductivity, conductivity of the brain tissue for microwaves, so they penetrate actually uh, at a longer distance into the brain. And of course, children are more sensitive than adults to microwave radiation. Uh, number five shows the uh, cellular telephone development in Sweden. We had first the analog system starting in early 1980s up to 2007. And after that, of course, the digital or GSM system is the dominating uh, system in Sweden as in most countries all over the world. Uh, there are new developments, the third generation, which goes on 1900 to 2100 megahertz from 2003. And now we have the fourth generation, uh, which is currently built in Sweden. Uh, the Tetra is used also in Sweden, mostly by the police and such security systems. What has not discussed so much is uh, the desktop cordless phone 
And these are, instead of landlines, used in offices and also in homes, and even at a larger extent than mobile phones if you calculate average use. Uh, they have been in Sweden since the late 1980s, and uh, first the analog system was used, and now the digital system. Uh, unfortunately, many uh, studies do not uh, consider cordless phone use and such exposure, which is a decent advantage uh, as to risk estimates. Uh, slide 6 is a bit complicated, but this is a meta-analysis of our studies uh, the Hadell Group and Interphone. These studies were part of the IARC evaluation of uh, radio frequencies and the carcinogenic potential for humans. Uh, we don't need to go through all these figures, but um, first we have our study period 1997 to 2003 and then Interphone 2000 to 2004. And we have calculated the risks for a latency of 10 years or more. That means that the first use of the mobile phone was for 10 plus years from the diagnosis of the tumor. Uh, and ipsilateral means that uh, the phone was used on the same side of the brain as the tumor developed, and contralateral on the opposite side. Uh, and if you go to meta-analysis uh, to the right side, we can skip the other results. We can see that ipsilateral exposure gives 1.8 as an increased risk for glioma, the most malignant brain tumor, and contralaterally lower uh, risk 1.2, which, which is a result that one would have expected uh, based on what I showed previously of the exposure situation. And of course, a high risk in the temporal lobe while most of the emissions are absorbed, 1.7, which is a significant uh, increased risk. Uh, we have also looked into the cumulative use, which is uh, 1640 hours or more over a lifetime. Uh, the um, cumulative use number used by Interphone, and we have recalculated our results according to that. And again, uh, in the meta-analysis, to the right we see for all exposure 1.7 as a risk for glioma, which is a significant increased risk, and higher risk for ipsilateral 2.3, and also in the temporal lobe. So these results are pretty consistent with an increased risk for glioma, uh, which has also a biological uh, meaning, because the risk comes after 10 years or more of exposure and a high exposure of 1640 hours and also that you find the risk in the parts of the brain where, where the exposure is highest, what one, the result that one should expect. In number 7 we have made the same calculations for the meningioma risk. This is a benign uh, tumor in the brain uh, and um, if you go again to the meta-analysis to the right, we actually do not find any statistically significant results. Uh, we made this meta-analysis uh, quite recently and uh, this finding is consistent with the IARC conclusion that there was no consistent increased risk for meningioma for use of mobile phones. The uh, next slide has, number eight, has the results for acoustic neuroma. Uh, this is a benign tumor which is located in uh, the, the hearing nerve in the brain, or rather inside of the ear. And this is really a hotspot area of the brain for uh, use of the handheld uh, uh, cordless or mobile phone. Uh, with particularly high exposure, so it could be a signal tumor for an increased risk. Again, we have made a meta-analysis of our results and uh, the interphone results. For latency 10 years or more, we see for ipsilateral exposure, a risk of 1.8 and lower for contralateral. And if you look into cumulative use, 1640 hours or more, the risk is 1.8, and for ipsilateral it's 2.6, which is a significantly increased risk. And for contralateral, there is no increased risk. So again, there seems to be some biological relevance of these findings. And in the summary, uh, these results uh, from our group and Interphone 
were the basis for the IR conclusion that there is uh, an increased risk for acoustic neuroma for those who use the mobile phone. If you take number nine, uh, we can see that uh, in our study of glioma cases, which, which is again the most malignant brain tumor with a poor outcome, based on 1148 cases, we can see that those who used the wireless phone first before the age of 20 had a statistically significant increased risk of 2.3. And that's on the wireless phone result to the left. Uh, 20 to 49, the risk is 1.3, and 50 years or more, the first time for use is 1.3. So highest risk for those who started as young subjects. And we have also made the analysis for mobile phone, uh, which is in the midsection, a risk of 3.1, again, uh, among the young persons, and cordless phones, 2.6 and lower risk for the older ones who st started the first use. So there's again a biological relevance of these findings, uh, taking that the young persons are more you know, sensitive to toxic agents than the older ones. And this is a varying finding, of course, taking the development of the mobile phone uh, use and cordless phone use uh, in society, especially among young uh, children and adolescents. Uh, number 10, uh, there has been a discussion that it's only we that see an increased risk for, uh, lung, uh, for brain tumor, uh, and this is not found in other studies. But we have compared our results with Interphone taking the same age group as Interphone, 30 to 59 years. Unfortunately, they didn't include the older ones. We went up to 80 years of age. And again, another item. Uh, which uh, is a disadvantage to Interphone is that use of cordless phones was disregarded. That means that those who had used the desktop cordless phone were regarded as unexposed. I mean, it's like uh, looking into smoking and the risk for lung cancer and just uh, looking into uh, one brand now, uh, brand name like Philip Morris and excluding those who have uh, smoked uh, marble or something else. Anyhow, if we look into Interphone and Appendix 2, we can see that uh, they have a risk which goes from 1.6 for 2 to, three, two to 4 years latency up to 5.9 is 1.5 and 10 years plus is 2.2, significantly increased risks. And as a reference category, they use those who had use those who had a latency less than one year, and uh, uh, sorry, latency less than, than two years, one to two years. In our study, we have actually a finding of increased risk after ten years, which is in the, almost the same magnitude as interphone. So uh, we don't actually see that our results. Uh, are exaggerated as compared to interphone. Uh, so, number 11, IARC made a decision in May 2011 that uh, uh, radio frequency electromagnetic fields from mobile phones and from other devices that emit similar non ionizing electromagnetic uh, radiation is a possible human carcinogen group 2B. Uh, next, number 12. This has not been so well taken, even of the WHO. It should be noted that IARC is part of WHO. So, uh, a fact sheet from WHO stated soon after the decision, to date, no adverse adverse health effects have been established as being caused by mobile phone use. It's of course a, a statement that is contradictory to the scientific evidence. And it's unclear why WHO made such a statement. The economist wrote, your correspondent thinks the whole brouhaha over mobile phones causing brain cancer is monumentally irrelevant compared with all the other things there are to worry about. 
And of course, this is actually should be looked upon um, uh, a varying effect uh, regarding industry if uh, mobile phones are causing brain cancer and what that can mean to the whole sector of, of technology. Microwave News with Luis Lessing wrote its ICNIP previous chairman, Anders Arlboom, has also registered his opinion that cell phone tumor risks are non existent. Uh, he was the lead author of the last ICNIP review uh, on cell phones and cancer. And another former member, Maria Blettner, was the lone dissenting voice in the final vote on the IARC working group. Both uh, Blettner and Alvin worked on interfering. Uh, so Maria Blettner thought it should be group three instead, as it's stated here. Well, there are some other studies that I should mention shortly. One is Cephalo, which uh, is uh, about uh, brain tumor risk in adolescents, children aged 7 to 19 years. And this has been published. And in short, regular users of mobile phone had an increased risk of 1.36 of brain tumor, which was not significant, but uh, there was an increased risk. Operator recorded use for 62 cases and 101 controls uh, with time since first subscription, 2.8 years or more, gave a significantly doubled risk for brain tumor. And there was also a statistically significant trend. Uh, there was a most peculiar uh, thing in that study, and it was that use of cordless phones was only assessed during the three first years. Uh, and uh, also when they calculated mobile phone use, they, they regarded cordless phone use as, as uh, no exposure to microwaves. Anyhow, using cordless, cordless phone analysis for only the first three years makes that one disregards most of the exposure because we know that among in this group of young persons, the use of cordless phones increases substantially over the years. The authors summarized that they did not observe that regular use of a mobile phone increased the risk for brain tumors. And an editorial in the very same journal accompanied that conclusion by stating that the study showed no increased risk of brain tumors. And this was echoed by a news release from the Karolinska Institute in Stockholm claiming that the results of no increased risk were reassuring. I think that this is a false declaration to the population of the increased risk among children. There are uh, substantial um, uh, weaknesses in the study, how it was performed, especially regarding the cordless phone use, but also in fact that there was an increased risk with even a significant trend. So I think as a researcher, one uh, has the obligation to give a correct uh, information to, uh, to the population. And uh, taking these results together with our results of higher risk among those who started mobile phone use or cordless phone use before the age of 20, it makes it uh, necessary to give a correct information uh, to uh, the population. Unfortunately, this type of information as from Karolinska Institute is what penetrates in the news media. The next, number 14, we have the Danish cohort study, which is much cited as a the study, the very best study, which uh, does not show an increased risk for uh, brain tumor uh, among mobile phone subscribers. The study is uh, so badly designed, or I would say it's designed not to show any risk, and uh, uh, it was uh, regarded by IARC as in not informative in this uh, regard. It was established during 1982 to 1995, where they made a record investigation of mobile phone subscriptions. And there were some 700,000 identified in Denmark. In the last update, less than half of them remain. The, the largest exclusion, more than 200,000 are, is because of they were corporate subscriptions with no individual data. So 
this can be criticized. No individual exposure data is found, and of course, uh, no data on use of cordless phones, no data on side of head, mostly used, etc. Uh, so, cordless phone use is uh, included in the reference category. There is no control for use of mobile phones after 1995 in the population. And of course, we know that the largest increase has been after that today. There are no operator verified data on years of subscription available, and there is considerable misclassification of mobile phone use, both among subscribers and the reference populations, since no new subscribers were included in the exposed cohort after 1995. Uh, the author's conclusion uh, was that in this update of a large nationwide cohort study of mobile phone use, there were no increased risks of tumors of the central nervous system, providing little evidence for a causal association. But this is not soundly based. I mean, this study is, is even designed not to, to show any uh, increased risk and uh, shouldn't be published as such. The editorial by Album and Feisting, parts of, Interfo uh, of ICNIP and Interphone study from Karolinska said, evidence is reassuring, but continued monitoring of health registers and prospective cohorts is still warranted. I mean, uh, uh, I'm a bit uh, scared if the standard of these epidemiologists is not higher than this, that they can publish studies with such weaknesses and claim that it is a good study that doesn't show any risk. My opinion is that uh, the study was even designed not to find an increased risk, and it's a school example of, of that. The next slide, number 15, I will say that there are data on increasing brain tumor incidents from several countries, and I don't think that we should go into that in detail. Uh, yes, we have a short time short time. I go to number 17, and uh, this is just to remind about uh, the uh, verdict in Italy about uh, an increased uh, risk for neurinoma in the trigeminal nerve, and we can go to number 18 uh, and look into the uh, trigeminal nerve with the ganglion van Gasser when the neurinoma was located. Uh, and this is quite uh, similar to the acoustic neurinoma case. Uh, we have number 19, and um, uh, we can go from that directly to number 20, which shows the recent development of the uh, iPads and also uh, the mobile, uh, the, the, so, sorry, the, the uh, computers in the preschool in, in Sweden, for example. Uh, they use uh, uh, both iPads and, uh, and uh, mobile phones among young children with that kind of exposure uh, to uh, microwave radiation. And in, in fact, nobody is discussing that uh, risk. I think that's something that should be taken up in the future. Okay, thank you for your attention. And unfortunately, I cannot respond to any questions, but if there is anything emerging, you can always email to me. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, please, let me t ask you a short question that we discussed with uh, Fiorenzo Marinelli from ISAMS regarding the possibility of extending the findings of epidemiologic evidence of tumor increased risk in the near field. Um, is it possible to extend this evidence to the distant fields, like for, for example the radar or the mast cells base stations? Yeah, that's an important question, but uh, I, I think uh, that is uh, very difficult as uh, long as we don't have the dose of exposure. If we, if we knew the, the dose in, in the mobile phone users, then it could be extended. But as you know, it can vary very much uh, according to the SAR in the mobile phone, how it's uh, held in the hand, uh, and, uh, and also the, the location against the brain. So it's, it's, it's very difficult. And unfortunately, I don't think that one can make yeah, such, uh, uh, such calculations. But again, if, if, uh, if we have an increased risk for 
mobile and cordless phone use. Uh, we don't really know uh, if there is a threshold or if there is a linearity of the risk from, from, so to say, zero. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you for your time. And it's very pressure your testimony, your experience for our Congress.